Welcome to Lunch Story. In each episode, you will get a behind the scenes look at a course, a program, or for the cloud. Here is your host, Dr. Ada Ballard. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so excited today to have Marcio Santos with me. Marcio is the founder of Nerd Digital and SEO Consultancy. He does SEO consulting for brands like Kettle and Fire and The Ten Spot and Market Circle. Most recently, he started helping course creators like, oh, is it Kay? Is that how I pronounce it? It's Kay, yeah. Kay, perfect. Kay from radreads.com, increase organic traffic and leads, and he is energized by seeing his clients win. I am so excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining me, Marcio. Thank you, my friend. How Yay! are you? I'm so this, excited to be here. We're going to have so much fun because Marcio went above and beyond and he has created a presentation for our conversation. So we're going to dive into a case study that he's going to show us how SEO can really impact your, your traffic and boost your launch results. But before we hop into your case study, Marcio, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and, and you know how you why you love SEO so much. How did you get into it? Yeah, so I've been working in digital marketing for several years now. I've started Nerd Digital about five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I was in marketing agencies. I've, I've done all sorts of stuff from working the front lines at marketing events, handing out flyers. Okay. to you know to planning events to doing strategy and now uh, more on the digital side with, with seo cool. so i i fell in love kind of by accident with with seo i i uh, after quitting my my job at the marketing agency okay. i figured you know i need to get back in the game to into digital i need to really to learn more and so i took a bunch of courses and i bought this this package and in the package it had seo in it okay. and i I, I had avoided SEO for a long time. I was like, I don't really want to know about that. But as soon as I took it, I was like, man, I am missing out on so much stuff, like mainly organic traffic, oh, right? I'm missing out on this. I didn't, I didn't know, really understand it. Yeah. And so at that point, I really dove in head first. And it was only about, you know, a few months after that where I got my first SEO client. And then since then, I've been working with, you know, many, many different clients from franchises to e-commerce stores and now to course creators. So... I'm excited. SEO is awesome if, if and when it works. It's not, it's not easy, depending on the industry that you're in, it's very competitive. Yeah. But um, if you're smart about it um, and you, you know how to prioritize, it, it, it's, uh, it's something very, very profitable, lucrative for, for anyone that's online. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think it's so great because in lots of, in, in e-commerce and other industries, I, I feel like people are talking a lot about SEO, but in the world of course creators, of coaching, of marketing, um, of membership programs, I don't hear too much talk about SEO. So I'm excited that you're, you're coming, coming over to our side mm -hmm. <laughs> and working with people um, in this world because I think there's a lot of value. Before we dive into your um, case study presentation, how would you define search engine optimization SEO? So I would I would define it as a as a series of techniques and, and a discipline really uh, mm -hmm. about optimizing your site. Okay. Right? So before anything, you have to have a site and you have to have content on it. Okay. SEO is something that you do afterwards, right? It's something okay. that you that you optimize what you've already built. Okay. However, having said that, it's also a tool that you can use to gather some data, to gather some intelligence, to figure out okay, what should I create in the first place, yes. right? So do to do a little bit of let's say opportunity analysis to figure out, okay, where in the market are there opportunities for me to write about some certain topics that are related, but are have, and we'll get into this in the presentation, yeah. a high volume and, and low competition. What are some, some, some of these gaps that I can fill with my message that will get me results faster, right? Because you don't want to invest, invest in, in creating content, promoting it, and wait for months and months and not see anything. It's, that can really, drain your 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 heart and your yes. your resources and it's 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 something you have to be wary of especially as a solopreneur yes. as a as a course creator if you're working usually you know you're working with a very small team or just by yourself mm -hmm. you really have to manage your energy and your time really well yes 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 and everyone loves that build of momentum right when you put things out into the world and people enjoy it so i love looking at seo as a way to kind of not shot not completely take a shot in the dark you can look and see oh what are people interested in 
what are people um, in engaging with online and use that information to really um, help you ensure that the stuff you put out is awesome. Okay, without further ado, let's let's do this case study. I'm thrilled. Let's um, do it. Yeah, let's do it. So you'll t share your screen and and I think I'll let you present it and I'll just ask all my little questions along the way. Okay, <laughs> okay awesome, awesome. So we're jumping straight into a case study. As Zeta mentioned, yes. uh, I'm, I'm, I started working with uh, Kay from radreads.co and the process that we used is essentially a four part process. So it started with the discovery phase where we, I interviewed him, asked him a bunch of questions and looked at different areas of his business and his website. After that, we developed a strategy based on that. Then we executed together because that's kind of like my style, the way I coach, I also help with the implementation. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to show you some of the results that, uh, that we've had with the launch. So I love that. I yeah. love that. And it's important that that process, no matter what you do, if it's like email or if it's SEO in this case, having those four phases are so, so crucial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that I find too, Ada, is that different areas of marketing, they overlap, right? Mm -hmm. Not only in terms of execution, but how you measure performance afterwards. Yes it's like sure you had a sale but what like how do you attribute value to the different dis disciplines and activities and that you that you did before a lot of it comes through email some comes for through sure. seo and so for sure. yeah there's definitely some overlap they work there. together right like yeah yeah emails people sign up for email newsletters on websites web people and send um have tons of links to websites in their emails so there's there's lots of of compliment there very right. exciting Right. So, so in this case study, um, the, when, when Kay approached me, he was, you know, thinking about relaunching his course. Um, and this was about 90 or let's say a hundred days before launch. So we didn't have a lot of time, yeah. especially if we're thinking about SEO, this isn't really the timeline that you want to do much for SEO, mm -hmm. but, um, that's kind of the, the parameters that we went into it. If you don't know notion, notion is a, is a knowledge management, tool that is highly customizable. So you see some people create like product roadmaps. Yeah. Some people use it for task management. Some people use it for note taking, even for writing books. So it's, it's very diverse and it's powerful in the way that you can customize it. So for yes. your audience, that might be a tool that they, they might want to take a look at. Yeah. Notion is a cool tool. It's very flexible. It, it, it almost approaching notion is how you should approach you like you approach this project right like think about discover figure out what you want and then you can go in there and, and implement it's not a tool that is going to tell you what to do it's really a tool that you tell it how you want everything to be organized yeah that's true that's mm -hmm. true it's, it's really a blank blank, blank yeah canvas. yeah so in the discovery um there are a few things that we need to keep in mind one is the timing that i already mentioned uh two is i wanted to really look at okay what are the assets that he has available at the moment yeah uh then i wanted to look at past performance and activities that he's done for previous launches yes. and then after that i wanted to look at his strengths like what is he really good at that we can that we can leverage in these next uh in this scope right yes 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 and so from that you know there's 90 days as i mentioned but the, the assets that the main assets that I identified were his content on his website, the videos in his YouTube and his emails. And so yes. what I mean is emails were his, um, it's almost like a combination of things between his, uh, his ability to convert people on his site into leads, okay. his ability to, to connect with his list. So he's had a good um, open rate. Nice. And it has also a good size. Nice. And then in terms of past performance, he did a bit of email and he did some paid in the past. Okay. Like paid advertising is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And his strengths that, that I would say that I identify with his writing. Yeah. Cause he, he writes prolifically through, through his newsletter. He's, he's writing practically daily, but he sends it, I think two or three times a week. Wow. And, and he, and they're very extensive and he blogs quite often as well. Wow. And, yeah. And then it's his likability. And so his likability is something that I tried to encourage him to use a little bit more in terms of partnerships. We, we didn't have enough time. Right. But, 90 days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But that, that's something that I, that I'm planning on, on getting him to use more in the future. Yeah. So from there, basically, you know, we gathered some data and we, and I figured out, I'm like, okay, so what are we, what are we going to do? And oftentimes when you're 
going through some kind of discovery phase, it's, it's like that, right? You gather mm -hmm. some data from here and from there. You probably access, um, if you're working with a new client, you'll go into their email account, you'll go into Google Analytics, and you'll go into their different marketing stack or tech stack, and you'll try to gather data and gather information from them, and then you put together a plan. And so the plan, the way it looked like for us, we did some SEO. We decided, okay, look, let's, let's optimize what you have in terms of SEO. So I'll go down on, on how I did that for him. Then we did um, some video SEO because I, I know his videos were strong. And then we said, look, your website, there's some low hanging opportunities where we can do some conversion rate optimization. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So a question that I have, and this mm -hmm. may be just the work that I do with my clients. Uh, did he, was he using this, a similar launch um, process from, from before? You mentioned that this isn't the first time he's launched this course and there are so many pieces and bells and whistles that go into a launch. So was this a matter of tweaking and perfecting what was already there or was he introducing new elements? This so there were a few new elements um, with his course and okay. that he added a new tier. So, oh, okay. Uh, like before, I think his highest ticket or his only ticket was two ninety nine. Okay. And then he, he added another tier, which is six ninety nine now. Oh, cool. And so that was one big change that he made with his course. Another change in terms of of launch. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he changed too much. No, most of it was kind of like optimizing what he had already done previously. So he, he used a lot of email based um, promotions and sales right. to his list. Right. And because of that, it was like, well, if you're using that and that worked well, well, the lever that we could probably pull on the, the easiest is, that makes most sense, is getting more people into your email list. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it, there's a, I have a short video on my website that kind of talks about when you're looking to increase your launch results, you can add more people to your list or you can become more efficient and improve your conversion rate. And so I, I, it looks like this strategy, I love it, it's doing both things. We're using the SEO to improve the number of people on your list um, and then you're maintaining and hopefully maybe slightly improving the conversion on, on the back end. This is very exciting. And yeah, uh, yeah I'm very excited. Keep going. I'll yeah. And so it's, it's, it's also something simplified. Like you, we're not doing a billion things. We're yes. really just trying to do it enough that would generate results and that we have a, a relative sense that it will work. We don't want to be doing things that aren't going to work during this right. campaign. Right, right, right. So with the SEO, it started with the site audit. Yeah. Um, after that, we I did some keyword research, and then after we did some site structure and some user experience optimization on that okay. site as well. And so for the site audit, yes. the question you might start with is why, right? Like why the heck do you want to do a site audit, and what what does that even mean? Yeah. And a technical site audit is something that can be humongous, but it can something that can also be very slim. Like you can mm. just call something like a site audit where you review it, right. you know, just your, with your eyes and you just click through it and see, okay, how does this feel? How does this work? And how does this align to your key objectives? Yes. That's one way to just to do an audit, Yep. A, a, site, a site review even. Another way to do it is to, to use some tools and to really dig into the data of the site to do mm -hmm. a full audit. And so I yes. did both. Okay. And cool. the reason why you want to do that is because you can often find low hanging opportunities. Right. And so I have a link here to the initial site review that we did together. And in this, you can see, for example, this little image here, Oops. which is a visualization of the site and so all of these little nodes these little dots these yeah. are pages or urls on the site okay lots of content there's lots of content but one yeah. thing that you'll notice here is that they're kind of dispersed right yes, so there's yes. some some things here on the on the edges that are all lonely they're not linked to a lot you can see like these pages have one little link pointing to them this guy is all right. by lonesome out here too and that's not good like these pages uh, usually, if they don't have any links to them, if they're very far from the home page, as you can see, they're like one, two, three, four, five. This one's like five steps away. Yeah. We call a page depth of five. Yeah. This one would be like a seven or eight or nine. Yeah. The farther you are from the home page, the less value Google understands or, or web crawlers understand that page has for you. So it's like you're telling the Google that it's far from the home page, it's not linked. 
and it probably has like duplicated content, well, I'm not going to waste time indexing that in Google, right? And so what, as soon as I saw this visualization, I'm like, look, there's lots and lots of things that we need to fix. There's lots of things that we need to improve. And so after, after we went through that process, this is what, oops, this is what the, the sitemap looks like now. Like it's, it's, we trimmed a whole bunch of stuff uh, off the edges yeah. and then we built a lot more links in the middle of the, like it, of the middle of the structure Like you can see things look a bit different. So the, to the untrained eye, this might not look like a huge improvement, but to, but to me, it's like, okay, this person went from crawling to, to walking type thing, you know, like yeah. there, there's, there's a, there's some, some good improvement that we were able to make really quickly. No, it is very visible, even for my untrained eye. Um, th there is definitely some improvement, but what I think the larger interesting point about, about this, these two images is just this, this idea that, oh my goodness, the, the depth, this, this concept of page depth, I don't think that most people, I wasn't really familiar with it before I met you. And I don't feel like a lot of people that maybe are watching this may be familiar with this idea. Um, and so can you talk a little bit more about why page depth is important and, and how Google or other search engines are using um, this type of information to, to help you rank? Yeah, so, so page depth, as I said, is, is the measure of the distance between a page and the home page. Mm -hmm. and so every additional click that it takes to get to that page, yes. that is the measure of its depth. So okay. if it takes three clicks to get to a page, that page has a page depth of three. And gotcha. so what Google does is it's, it, you know, other crawlers too, what they do is they look at page depth as an indicator, as a signal. Mm -hmm. the SEOs, SEOs, we use that word a lot, signals, right? SEO signals. Um, we use that, they'll use that as a signal to say, okay, if this page is on level three and this page is on level two, what makes sense that this page is of more value, of more impact, of more importance to that business and to that website than something that's on level three or level four, level five. And so an easy, usually like an easy optimization that you can do if you yes. have, um, let's say a category on your site that you want to optimize or you have a series of blog posts that you want to optimize is just a change of the depth. And you can do that by adding them to the home page, right? So if you yes. have you have your home page and you have some blog posts that you want to optimize, you want to get some more juice of them. Maybe they're new, for example, they don't have a lot of traffic. Add a link to your new newly published blog post straight to your home page because what you're telling Google is that look, my most important page, which is my home page, is linking to this blog post, right? This this that blog post would have a link depth of one, right? And you'll be able to it'll pass on uh, a term that we use called link juice over to, to that page. Yes. <laughs> link juice. That's fantastic. But I feel like this for me, and it might be for other people that are watching, like completely shifts my brain about my website. Like, you know, people have home pages and that's cool. And you're like, okay, I got a home page and then I have this blog page and I have some other pages. Um, and it was only when I became more familiar with link depth, that I was like, whoa, no, the, the sequence and the order really matters. To me, it was more like, okay, there are pages and there are pages and that's fine. Um, but now it's really um, learning more about how, how um, crawlers work and how Google is searching your website and identifying, you know, how things rank better more than others can give you some really interesting insights for the small changes with your existing assets, which you mentioned earlier, that, okay. can, that can make some improvements and give you more yeah. of that juice. So I think that that's, yeah. I think that that's amazing. That's my, my favorite parts of, as yeah, I'm and, learning more and more about SEO, it's my favorite part. And, and that's also something that you can do competitively, meaning that let's say, for example, you use a tool like Ahrefs or you use SEMrush or you use some kind of tool yeah. to figure out where you're ranking for a specific keyword. And then you see, well, my competitors are ranking at positions one, two, three, four, five, or wherever they are. And you're, right. you know, lower in the rankings you might, um, you, what you can do is go to their page and see like, are they, what type of page depth are they at? Are they on the mm. home page? Are they in, are, like how many clicks does it take to get to that page? Is there a breadcrumb that takes you back up to the home page and, and, and down below? Like, are they in the main menu or in the footer? H how far away from the home page are they? If you can do that, sometimes what you'll find is that, look, these people, 
uh, or my competitor is, is on the homepage, that's how they're, they're ranking higher. Or they're not, well, maybe there's an opportunity for me to, to jump in and, and, and send some more internal links, which is another entire topic. Yes. Um, that can help you outrank your competitors. That's fascinating. I, I'm, I'm sorry for the digressing, but I, I felt, figured this was such an important topic that I was like, no, let's sit here for a little, little while. Please continue. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so after we did this site audit, I mean, I'm just, you know, skimming over it, but there, we, we figured out that um, there's some opportunities. So we fixed some technical things. Yes. And the fixing the technical things, again, is important because what happens is if you have things that are broken on your site, meaning like uh, uh, broken pages, what happens is when the crawler comes to your site, if it finds broken pages, what it'll do is it'll stop coming to your website as often. Oh. Yeah. And so if it stops coming to your website as often, what that means is it can take longer for the pages and the content that you've created to rank. Right. Whereas if it finds a competitor that doesn't have broken stuff, it will prioritize your competitor versus yours. Right. And so in the long run, if you kind of, let's say you have a tech, uh, something that's broken in your website, you don't know about it. You've never fixed it. You kind of just, you know, went on about your business. It could be months and months where your, where your competitor is like taking advantage of that, like month mm. over month, over month, over month. And little by little, they're just crawling away from you. They're, you know, they're taking steps away from you. And then later it's going to be hard for you to catch up. So fixing technical things is, is important. Like it's, Every project I've ever worked on in SEO, there's always been some kind of technical thing that we can fix. Always. Always. Yeah. yeah. From multi-million dollar websites to, you know, mom and pop websites. Everything in between, everybody usually has something that needs fixing. Right, 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 right. And there's just so many parts to a website and plugins that are updating or scripts that are need changing. And yeah, so the, yes, there's always opportunity. But I, I, again, I love how your existing assets the existing stuff that you have on your website right now can can be refreshed um, and and you'll see improvements. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, and so the next part of uh, of the SEO strategy was uh, some keyword research. Yes, and so the reason why we do this as well it's it's pretty aligned with with the, the technical audit in that you want to look for opportunities and I mentioned this in the, in the, in the intro. Yes. And what I found from here is that uh, he already had some content. It was doing quite well. And I wanted to figure out, okay, how can we optimize that? And so I found some opportunities there. And then the next thing that we did is I looked for some opportunities for new content that, uh, that would really offer him some, some real gains, some quick, some mm. quick wins. And we identified not a lot. There were only really like three new pages that he created. And then we optimized about like three or four. But the biggest change that we made in terms of his, like how his keyword research really helped us was optimizing his structure of the site. The structure of his site, is that what you're saying? Is yeah, what you're so, saying? So, yeah, so both the structure and like the, the content of it. It's, it, it's, it's both mixed and I'll, I'll show you, I'll reveal this in the, next, okay. in the next slide here. So in terms of site structure and user experience, it, this is not really well known uh, in terms of SEO. Yeah. Uh, uh, some people might think that it's just adding keywords and it's just adding more content to a page. Mm -hmm. But in fact, if you have a page that's on a similar topic and, and the way this is done, the way you want to think about SEO is always in relative terms. It's always yeah. one keyword, how you relate to a competitor. Sure. Right? And so you always want to relate how your page relates to a competitor. And so if, if you just think about it in that way, the user searches for a specific term, they go to your competitor's page yes. and they don't enjoy their experience. And Google doesn't really know if they enjoyed it. All they know is that, you know, how much time that person spent on the page. Right. And if they return to the search result, search engine result page will happen. And then they click on your page and stay longer and maybe mm -hmm. click on more pages. Well, Google will say, like, Hmm, I showed the person typed in this word. They clicked on this result. They didn't seem to be happy and they bounced back. And then they went to this page and they stayed and they click on more page and they never came back to search. That means that I should show them this page and show, instead of that page next time, right? Yep. Yeah. So if we just take it, I mean, there's tons more signals and tons more ways that, that ranking happens and, and those, the, the ranking fluctuates. But if you just take it from a very basic example, that's kind of like how user experience comes into play. Right, right. And it's a whole new perspective on user experience. I feel like 
in, in the past, when I've looked at it or spoken to people about it, or even attended trainings and different things about websites, there's always been this assumption that you have a person that comes to your website and they're, yeah, they're going to come for a few seconds, but you're trying to tell a story or you're trying to convey a message within a certain amount of time. That what I love about the way that you're presenting it, one is this idea of being relative. So you first have to sort of do a bit better, epsilon better than everybody else. Yeah. Um, and for a particular phrase or a particular request. So it's not like you need to tell your whole life story or, you know, there's a particular reason this person showed up and how or well are you addressing that reason? And you need to make sure you're addressing that reason better than the other people. I think right. that that's a really cool, uh, it's a new mind shift for me on, on website design. Cool. So in terms of opportunities here, um, what we decided to do was, uh, like as I showed you in the site crawl, in that little mm -hmm. site map that I showed yes. you, there's a lot of pages that are out on the boundaries, things like that. And there are also, because we're focusing on this Notion course, we wanted to prioritize the Notion content. And so yes. uh, I, I think I have a screenshot here of initially his blog page, and you can, you can switch this around for Notion because his Notion page essentially looked like that. Like when you yes. go to radreads.co forward slash Notion, and pay attention here, if you, if, you have, if you use WordPress, because this applies to you, I'm, I'm almost certain this applies to you. Yeah. And what happens is, usually he did this, for example, he created Notion blog posts, he created a category, Yes. Called Notion. Yes. And then he just stuffed all his blog posts in there. Yes. Right. And so what would happen is when somebody would go to forward slash Notion, it would say Notion, and then it would just have a bunch of blog posts in here. Right. Right. The thing with that is that it's not optimized. It's not the best experience that you can possibly offer to your users. You For have sure. to take a step back and realize that people are crazy today crazy in terms of busy right <laughs> yes, like yes yes people are like on their cell phones they have a smart watch and then they have a screen and then they have like an ipad in between them and their yes, screen yes, like, yes there's yes. so many screens and there's pop-ups and they have a smart home and there's smart bulbs like there's so much stuff going on with people that you have to hold their hands and help them and really create an experience as ada uh, mentioned yeah when you're trying to get them to, to read your stuff and to, to, to stop, right? Like the, the main thing that you want to get is their attention. After yes. that, you want to get them to stop and like actually read something. And so from this, what we transformed here is his blog page, we transformed it into this. So his, his Notion page, instead of having a bunch of Notion posts, we curated the best Notion posts. Then we mm. reorganized them. Right? We reorganize them in a way that is presented in a way that you can read it. Like if it's the basics, if you're looking for comparisons or templates, or if you're looking for more advanced concepts, right? you can self-identify where you are in your Notion Hub learning journey or Notion journey. And then you can click through and say, look, I'm really a beginner, or actually I'm, I'm more in the comparisons. I've already used Evernote. I've already used Airtable. How does Notion compare? Right, right, right. Right, and so this this was also through keyword research, like figuring out what were the different angles and intents that people had with regards to Notion mm. that came through. Yeah, that came through the keyword research, and then that helped us build out these categories. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It is a completely different way of of putting it out there. But when you take a step back, you're like, oh yeah, as as a as a visitor to this website. It is, even though it's less visual and the fact that there's not as many images on the screen, it's more direct in terms of what do I do? How do I, how do I use this page to get from where I am now to where I want to be? So that part is very, um, very yeah. exciting. And one thing that I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't include here was that I want to show you that. Can I just... I'm going to show you that. Okay. And it's, it's the fact that another little step that we took here was to add at the bottom of the page. So this is the bottom of the page. We added those same images for ah. people to go back, back to the, the hub page. I see. I see. Right. And so there's a little bit of tweaking that we had to do inside the WordPress backend 
so that we could change the permalink structure and change the categories and make sure that instead of pointing to a category, you'd point to a page. There's right. a little bit of tweaking that you can do. It's a little bit technical, but it's doable. But that's how this was, we, we were able to do this. Like we're able to trick WordPress instead of linking to a category page, link right. to the, our, our page, right? So that we have full control of how it's displayed and like how it feels. Right, 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 right. That, that's one thing I wanted to show you there. Very cool. I was curious if those were links. Um, so that's very interesting. Yeah. And I love, and I can, I can also have a sense for how this comes back to the image you showed earlier in terms of the structure, the network structure of your pages. Now from your homepage, I'm assuming there'll be a link to the Notion Hub and now everything is kind of running around the Notion Hub. So all of that, the depth is, is, is reduced. Right? Exactly. And, and now we know that the depth is directly tied to how uh, search engines think of the importance of the page, which is mind blowing like, oh, I would have never thought of it that way, but it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So that just shifts the whole signal, to use your word, of, of how important this content is to get out into the world. So that is very, very cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool stuff. And I love the integration of the, the structure of the website, tying it directly to the keywords. One of the things I find fascinating about keyword research is that in so many things in business, sometimes you are you know, just throwing spaghetti at the wall or experimenting. But keyword research is really like, no, there were real people that put this in the search bar and wanted an answer. Um, and so tying what it is that you do to what people are searching, I've always found to be a really exciting opportunity. So this is this shows not only of like, okay, here's a table in HF in a um, in Ahrefs or in some other tool. Um, but what do I actually do with the fact that, you know, a thousand people are searching for whatever this phrase is. This is very cool. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. And, and one thing that, that comes to mind, Ada, as you're, as you're saying that is the fact that, and this is important for course creators specifically, is that mm -hmm. one thing that I found when doing the keyword research for, for K was that there is a lot of opportunity I, be, I believe there's probably a lot of opportunity for other types of software, meaning that if you're a course creator mm -hmm. and you create a course specifically for a piece of software like Notion, yeah. there, there's usually a lot of opportunity, especially if the software is new. So if you think about other software that's coming out in the no code, for example, in like this whole no code arena, yes, yes, yes. which is absolutely exploding. Yes pick one of those softwares and run with it because you could, you could create content for it and rank very easily simply because there's high search volume right now because people are so interested. Right. People are writing about it. People are curious about it. People are investing in no code software, but they're also trying and they're also trying to learn it. And they're also like very little competition when you think about, um, you know, the entire market. Well, right. A lot of people use, let's say Microsoft Office 365 and, and Google Sheets and, you know, that suite of software, but not a lot of people really use no code, right? You might right, feel right, like right, right. It, it's something that people talk about, but again, that's just an example of, um, and, and a little tip there. Like if you, if you're a course creator that you create, you know, a course for specific software, there's, there's, there's opportunity for you out there. I believe that. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. The next, the next bit of our strategy was down to conversion rate optimization. Yeah. And so our main metric for everything that we did every week, whenever, or biweekly, whenever we would speak was leads. Okay. But bef right. But before a lead happens, we know that, and, and obviously we need more traffic, but in terms of how our site is performing, we wanted to make sure that people were spending more time on page and they were visiting more pages. And the hub page helped us with that a lot, a lot. So we saw a time on page, I think, go up by like 36% and pages per visit go up by like another 30%. Um, and that led to more leads, right? So the more time that people spend on the page, what that is doing is people are trusting you more. Right. People are, are getting to know and understand you a little bit more. People are watching more of his videos, reading a little bit more. You know, actually, let me convert. Let me get the downloadable. Let me get the sheet. Let me get the template. It's the lead is almost like a result of the, these leading metrics, right? So like right. let's call these lead metrics. This is kind of like a lag metric of our, our performance. Right. Um, but then it becomes like a lead metric in the next thing, which is sales. 
right? right, so, right which right. We'll, we'll get into in a, in a bit. Because it's always a process, right? So there are these key steps along the way in, in engaging with people and having them purchase your course. And there are different ways that you can measure the steps up to it, leading up to it. And then there are steps that happen after that lag after. So, yeah. Yeah. So the, cool. one of the, the main places where we spent uh, a good amount of time and some effort and some thought was on the homepage itself. So this is a, what the homepage looked, at, looked like before we started working together on mm -hmm. mobile. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to visualize on mobile first because Google is using uh, mobile based indexing first. And what that means is they're crawling your website with a mobile browser and with their mobile crawler and they're looking and using what they see on mobile to help you rank. Right, they're, they're using what they see on mobile to define how are they going to prioritize in you know, one page versus another. Another thing too that it's important for you to keep in mind, the reason why Google is doing that is because more users are on mobile. Right. Right? So if they're going where the market is and where the market's going to be. And so you want to make sure that your site is optimized for mobile. And so when, I, when we first looked at the homepage, we can automatically see like, look, our key metric here is leads. We need to make sure that above the fold, we're bringing people into your lead list. Right, right, so right, right. We put the form right up top. Uh, we deprioritized, you know, a little bit of this content so that right. we could make sure to capture some more leads. And this led to a little bit of, of, of a boost. Um, beyond that, what we also did on the homepage, I think I have to move this aside or people won't see the screenshots. Let me put it on the side. Um, this is the, what the homepage looked like before. So it just had, you know, hi, I'm Kay and an image and, you know, a little blurb over here and then the, right. uh, the sign up box. It didn't really have a footer. It didn't have anything else other than that. And I told them, look, we, sh we really need to, to leverage a little bit more of your, of your expertise here. Like you've been featured on CNN and, and Wall Street Journal and stuff. So we use right. these images here to, to, um, as social proof. Right. They're also something that catches people's eyes, like images themselves, they tell a lot of story. Like as soon as you see CNN and Bloomberg, you're like, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in your subconscious that, that helps you tell a story and helps attribute some value to the website, to For this sure. author, to this course creator. For That's sure. something that you can use too. So if you're a course creator and you've created something, you've been featured somewhere, make sure to use those logos on your website because that can help attribute you kind of, there's this halo effect that uh, those brands will, you know, lend you some some uh, some trust as soon as you place them on your site. So the same copy is there. We kind of broke it up a little bit so it's more readable instead of this big block of text right here. Yeah. And the, the important thing there is that people don't read. Yes. <laughs> like you, users do not read; they scan. So what what happens is their eyeball will jump all over the screen, and you can see this when you use something like Hotjar. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see uh, people's use. Um, a mouse cursor jumping all over the screen you'll see like you know the scroll down scroll up scroll down scroll up and they'll maybe the, they just bounce around and you, what you notice is that okay things that are bolded and underlined and highlighted and broken apart that's where the eyeball just like kind of jumps into it as soon as they see something intro okay over for millennials and then they might read the next few words after that but they're not going to stop and read every single like don't don't even expect that right 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 we also added some images so these images are from from other course creators and founders. Uh, and so we thought it was relevant to add them to. And so all of these things, they, they helped boost his, uh, his conversion rate optimization. And then here we added some, some important links to some top pages that we wanted to optimize, as I mentioned before, as a technique that you can use too. Yes. And then lastly, also our menu. This is something that not a lot of people think to do, but we cut out a lot of stuff, right? Like we removed links from here and we put them in the footer. Because again, our main idea that we wanted to do here is, is promote Notion. We wanted right. people to get to our Notion Hub. So this is exactly what Notion Hub is. We wanted people to know about him so they can trust him. Let's get them to the About page. Let's get them to the Notion page. Everything else is secondary. So you have to be ruthless when it comes to prioritization. If everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority. So make sure that you, you're... And you can think about this on a... On a, on a uh, let's say as like a campaign approach, right? So let's say you're a few weeks before your launch, a few months before your launch, a year before mm -hmm. your launch, how does your menu change? How does your website change based on where you are uh, in your season, right? In your campaign yeah. for, for your, your marketing strategy. That's something you want to think about. Um, another thing that we implemented was a pop-up. 
So yeah. we implemented this exit intent pop-up that we weren't using at all. Mm. I, don't, I don't think we've ever used an exit intent. And when we looked at our numbers, the reason why we did this, is we looked at our numbers and we had established a goal that we wanted to reach in terms of leads. And we're like, yes. you know, we're, we're a little bit behind that. And, I'll sh and there's a really cool thing that I learned from working with this, working with this other guy, where he talks about your goals in terms of how it, how it tracks to the month. Okay. And so let's say, for example, if your month, if you're in week one of the month, yeah. then you're in, let's say you're 25% elapsed like 25 percent of the month has gone by sure but you've reached 50 percent of your goal that means you're 25 percent ahead, ahead of where you're yeah. supposed to be yeah yeah right so i love i love that because it gives you like at the moment where am i yes and what should i do and so like we had one of our bi-weekly or bi-monthly calls and we said you know look we're we're like about 15 20 percent below where we should be for leads Sure. We have to we have to do something now. Like, what can we do that's easy, that's fast, that will definitely get us results? And then we came up with a pop up. So we 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 just deployed the pop up, and we saw like again, I think twenty four percent lift in in new leads like really quickly. And this Amazing. took us like a few minutes to implement, right? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's a great return on the investment in terms of the time. But yeah. what I love about the thinking is really focused on the outcome. So, you know, what are we looking for? We're looking for leads. The leads are going to go into this larger email funnel that you've spoken about that will has the course at the end. So very upfront, you're telling people about Notion. We know very early on that this gentleman is a, a Notion expert and can teach a lot about it and has lots of really cool resources to share with you. So I think that that, all of that is really, really awesome. What's the next step? The next step is we just launched this yesterday. Okay. So uh, a day after Open Cart, we launched this uh, this ribbon at the top yes. of the page to okay. get people to the sign up page. Okay. Because otherwise, the only way people know about it is either they get it through email or yep. they see it once they hit other pages. Yes, yes. And yes. I said, you know, look, if we need to increase distribution of your message right now. This is like the key moment in your life of of this course like we've been working weeks and weeks and weeks yes we need to let people know we either create a banner we create a custom header and that's yeah. something you can do too that's something that you see amazon and other e-commerce yes. platforms do a lot those are create custom banners for custom seasons for custom launches you know they'll, they'll make it pretty they'll, they'll they'll use imagery and messaging to help ignite these feelings and these thoughts inside of you say wait a minute i can't miss out on this or wait this is a great opportunity or wait there's a discount or wait like that's why they do it. They make it time sensitive. And that's yes. also that we, that we did here. We mentioned time and we mentioned the offer and we got them to, to click. And so again, we saw a little bit of a lift here because we only launched it just yesterday. Yes. Um, but this should, it's, it's rolled out uh, site-wide. Fantastic. That's a great, a great tip. How are we doing on time? We are going to have to wrap up shortly, okay. but uh, yeah, <laughs> this is okay, one of my me... longer conversations, but it's been a good one. Let me zoom past. I only have two more slides, I think. So okay. in, in the last the last bit of the strategy was video SEO. So he has a, a YouTube channel. He's already been creating some some videos on YouTube, but I saw that he had more opportunity to optimize. And yes. when you're optimizing on YouTube, it's very different when you're uh, um, optimizing for Google for Google okay. search. Sure. I, I don't have time to go into that. Ada, I talked to you about that. Later. I know. Uh, I, I know some of the, yeah. the good stuff. Maybe we'll we'll see if people are interested. Leave a comment and. We'll have Marcio come back and talk about videos. Yeah, but essentially, uh, like the titles, the tag, the descriptions, and engagement of your video, meaning how interesting is your video? How able are you to capture people's attention and not let them leave? Like all of those elements together, that's what we worked on together. Yes. And we were able to see a significant, like a very significant increase in views for him. Like yeah. his YouTube views went up. And this was in a matter of days, right? Like so, and after, and we only optimized like a handful of videos. And we saw a really big spike. Like this was, I was really happy with this. How, how do we read this chart? Or, oops, like the blue line, the, the green line, the teal line, what, what does it all mean? So the blue line, these are YouTube views. Okay. And so these are just a total number of views that your videos have had. Every time somebody okay. clicks on play, that, that after a few seconds, I believe it's considered it's a, view. a view. Okay. And in suggested view, this is like suggested videos. So, okay. for example, if after you search for, let's say, keto diet and you've watched a video, anything that comes up in the sidebar, that'd be like a suggested video. 
Or I after you see. close YouTube, yeah, after you close YouTube, come back the next time and then you go to the homepage of YouTube, the suggested videos in there, that would be another, you know, um, let's say notch right here. Yeah, yeah. And, and what platform is this that you're looking at? This is vidIQ. vidIQ. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar a, with that. Very it's interesting. It's another tool that's very useful. You can use it. It's across the entire, let's say, um, video SEO lifecycle in terms of planning your video, figuring out what topics are there, the keyword opportunities, search volume, and then even on optimizing and promoting your videos too. There's some cool uh, yeah. stuff that, that we're actually using a new feature that they call the uh, description campaigns. Uh, we're rolling that out, I think, over the next few days. Oh. Yeah, and then lastly, um, is measurement. So I wanted to show you just like a, a dashboard that I put together for pretty much all of my clients. I usually put like a custom dashboard together. And this is one of them. Yeah. And I wanted to jump over to the last slide that I created from the last dashboard, which summarizes our KPIs, because this is something we don't always have time to look at all the numbers, but we always have time to look at this. And so in this yes. dashboard, what we what I did here is you can see here this is the month of August this is yes. the month of September and the way you the way you want to look at this the way you want to read this and you can you can think about this you can do this on a piece of paper is you want to think about how um, you want to think about it in terms of let's say like a funnel like people are are, are familiar with this a marketing yeah. funnel you want to think about it in terms of depth of engagement and and how that leads up to your your major lead your major uh kpi okay. ours is as leads sure but then there are these leading metrics that happen before yes. right and so we yes. have the user we have new user we have pages per session we have average time on page and then we have a lead yes that's that's kind of like how we want to read it and different different websites you might prioritize different metrics over for others. sure for sure for sure and then, after, and then another thing that is important to, to see here, it's the, like to look at, is how are different channels performing for our key, our KPIs? For right? sure. And based on that, you can say, okay, look, we're making some investment in organic search. Is it performing? We're making right. some investments in social. Is it performing? Right. So you want to again, it, it, you have to have this ability to go kind of like in the weeds and then come back out again, like strategically. Yes. Like where is my time and my my efforts going? And then come into the weeds a bit and say, like, okay, if it's organic search, which page specifically is working? Are right. there pages that aren't working? Are there pages that are below average time on page, above average? Why and why not? Like it takes some curiosity, takes some digging. Yes. I, this is something that I really enjoy doing. And then lastly, because I know you're in a big, big hurry too, is you can also look and break it down in terms of you break your, break your performance down into these buckets, which is acquisition behavior and conversions, which you'll find in Google Analytics. That's actually how they break down um the google the google analytics dashboard right and here this is something super fun is what i was telling you about the, the leading and um the performance and how you're pacing rather yes right? how you're yes pacing. yes this bar here this is a bar that i drew yep uh in here and this is just something not drew but i just i just you, uh, placed it yes as a goal for us to for that month right and so i i, I took a, a previous number that i added you know 10 15 percent on top of it. it's like look this is where we want to be right this is where we want to be by the end of the month sure this thick blue line here this is what we did last month and then right. the, the dark blue line is what we're doing right now right and so like as you read it let's say for example if this is the entire month then you know quarter of the way which is the first week would be right here and so if we're across that line we know that we're above our goal. If we're below it, then we know that we're below our goal. So at a glance, yeah. you're like, oh my God, I need to do something. I need to email somebody. I need to, like, <laughs> if you know you have to do something, right? Yes, so yes. This is the last thing I wanted to show you because I think it's super, and this took a lot of work too because there's a lot of Google Analytics work. There's a lot of custom, like Google yes. Tag Manager work that goes into doing this type to of doing, stuff. Yes, yes, but yes. It's, it's worth it. It's, it's super important. For sure, for sure, and I, you know, I love a, a bullet graph like uh, like anyone else. So I I, yeah. I love your application of it here. Um, I find overall this, and I think this is something we have in common: this um, passion and interest in big goals. What are, what are our clients really after? Being at selling courses or you know 
before that, getting people to sign up for your list, et cetera, and then breaking down those big goals into little measurable chunks, right? So what are all the little steps that happen that we can know when someone is on their way to achieving the outcome that we're after? And I find that, that that's one of the cool things I enjoy about analyzing email analytics data. And it, it definitely came through for you here in, in, in terms of looking at websites. I really deeply appreciate our conversation. It has this has probably been one of my longest of these, <laughs> of these videos, but I think it was well worth it because there was so much that we all learned today in terms of little things. Um, you know, this idea of, of page depth, I think is huge. Um, also the idea, um, what was the other there was and well i guess mostly caged up there's there are probably more if i re-listen to this interview i'll probably be like oh i forgot that one um which was great and then also i loved how we got into the the weeds and really could see that in a fairly short amount of time for 90 days for you to be in this process to see this kind of result is really really cool and encouraging and and only um that's one of the reasons i like launches so much is because within a fairly short amount of time you can get something out the door and see the money come in and then you're like okay i need a little bit of a break and then we're going to do it again <laughs> yeah. and so i think that that is very exciting exciting work tell everyone if they wanted to learn more about the work that you do or maybe get in contact with you where where should they go just go to my website nerddigital.com okay. uh, you can find me there there are some materials that you can read to learn more about seo you can sign up to the newsletter there and yeah uh, that's the best place to find me yeah thank you Adrian. fantastic well i'm so thankful that you decided to join me and give us quite the presentation and uh, thank you so much you're welcome thank you all right bye 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 thanks for watching please subscribe to be notified for the next episode if you know someone that would benefit from this episode please share if you are ready to improve your launch results, visit Dr. Ada's website at www.operationsallied.com. All of the links mentioned in the episode are in the description below. Have a great day.